Well, good morning, everyone. And welcome to communicating with difficult customers today presented by Ms. Anna Hay. My name is Brett Augustine. I'm a recovery business advisor for North central Texas. Uh, business development centers. We are a leading provider for assistance for small businesses, and we are grant funded, which allows us to offer these webinars and many other services at no cost to you. Communi communicating with difficult customers, as you know, is a big topic whenever it comes to small businesses, especially because sometimes we feel like we're just not armed to deal with it. So we're really happy to have Ms. Anna Hay today speaking with us. For those of you who don't know Ms. Anna, she is she's worked with the Del Mar College, SBDC in Corpus Christi. Texas A&M, International University in Laredo, Angelo State College in, in San Angelo, and the University of Houston, Victoria in Victoria. She has over 35 years of experience in customer service, sales, relationship management, and marketing. And she's an entrepreneur at heart and has a passion for helping other business owners succeed in their areas. And with that said, I'd also like to say today, please put into the chat any questions you have, and we'll be happy to answer those as we go, or whenever Anna's ready towards the end, we'll address any and all of your questions. And if you would, please give a warm welcome for Miss Anna Hayes. Oh, thank you, Brett. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, well, thank you so much to the North Central uh, Texas SBDC for having me today and for hosting this webinar. Um, and just, I wanna tell you just a shout out to all the SBDCs uh, really uh, throughout throughout the US, um, but especially here uh, at Del Mar College and to your SBDC. I actually became a client of the SBDC in September of 2019. And I can tell you my business has just grown tremendously since that time with my business advisor and with the team of uh, consultants there. So if you are if you're a business owner here today or you're an entrepreneur here on this webinar and you have not reached out to them yet you heard about this webinar through another resource or maybe you're on their email list but you haven't actually reached out i encourage you to there is so much information that they provide to you and their services are free uh, so um i will tell you that by attending a number of webinars that i have since 2018 and the partnership that i've had with them has really brought me to where our business is here today. So um, reach out to the North Texas uh, SBDC. Um, I know that they also have a YouTube channel for all of the recordings of the webinars that they've had. They have that in the chat box so you can see that. Um, so, but I also wanna welcome you today. Welcome back. You might've attended the Make It A Great Day customer service training that we had, um, I believe it was last week or the week before. And, uh, but today, this is like a sequel to that make it a great day class. Um, and I want you to give yourselves a high five for being here because you know what, as business owners, we wear so many hats. Um, and if you're a small business, you might be just two or three people, you're doing a lot. So to be able to take an hour to an hour and a half of your time to be able to schedule this and listen, it's huge. So um, let's get started. Uh, let's get real too. Um, communicating with difficult customers is kind of like, it doesn't have the same vibe as the make it a great day, excellence to customer service, right? Um, and this actual, this actual training class developed from a client that we had worked with out of state back in 2021. We had done um, customers, the make it a great day customer service training class for them. Primarily, they're an online business and they were like, well, what happens when our customers aren't happy on it? What happens then? I'm like, you know what? I said, we need to discuss this. We need to talk about these things that are uncomfortable, right? Uh, so we're going to we're going to go through this together. Um, I'm going to give you a number of personal examples and some things that I've actually seen, too, as I've been out and as, as I'm just out 
all the time, but also, you know, my background is in a lot of different industries. Um, it's in, I was in banking for 12 years. I was in the recruiting staffing industry, the medical field, uh, fundraising with schools, uh, retail management. So as I created this communicating with difficult customers, I mean, I, I really saw so many kind of trends and so many different things that had developed over the years and how we handle things. But uh, just a quick agenda, uh, this is an agenda of what we're gonna cover today. We're gonna go over, we're just gonna briefly talk about the six steps of excellence in customer service. We're gonna talk about how to learn how to handle difficult situations and learn how to really practice that active listening, okay? Um, we're going to learn how to be prepared and uh, being prepared and ready, right? And even through this pandemic, um, I know, and I'll just say personally how, you know, things have been a little bit more sensitive. All of us have been a little bit more emotional. So maybe we've, we've, um, our emotions maybe have, have, um, have really kind of played into the customer service or how we're hand, how maybe customers are, or maybe a little bit more emotional. So maybe there, there has been more problems that have arisen. Um, we're going to talk about solutions to those, you know, and then we're going to end it too with some good customer service phrases and etiquette and then open up for questions and takeaways. Okay. So let's go back to the, the, uh, six steps of excellence in customer service. We talked a lot about first impressions. We spent a lot of time on first impressions. So if you were on this, uh, webinar, um, the make it a great day. Uh, hopefully, too, you've created a, a new welcoming greeting for your business. Uh, when your associates answer the phone or when you answer your phone personally. And uh, we talked a lot about uh, you knowing your brand, how you are the brand. And um, we talked, uh, we didn't talk a whole lot. We didn't go into detail about learn to listen, but we are going to go into detail with that. Uh, we talked about you are the brand and how are you in your brand? How do you want your brand and how do you want your business to per be perceived? Uh, how do we want to leave that lasting impression, right? And then we talked about make it a great day. How do we put the great in our day and how we're dealing with our customers on a daily basis, right? So, um, but you know what? I love this quote from Bill Gates, and it's something that it's just, again, it's in that file up here um, of the most unhappy customers can be our greatest source of learning, can't they? I mean, really, when we have an unhappy customer, we, you know, look deep at the situation. And then a lot of times businesses have created new services. They've created new products. Uh, new ways to interact with their customers. So I just think that that quote is so profound, right? And also when I was doing some research on customer service training, I ran across this by Mary Shore, Shore's Communication, how companies today are putting so much money and time into the sales of their business and scripting calls. But then, you know, what's happened to the customer service training? It's kind of like, but it's the first thing that customers, that businesses should really um, look at, right? So anyway, I thought that these were two really good quotes. So I wanted to share those today. But you know, um, hand, how, how we're gonna handle difficult customer situations is really gonna be how prepared and ready we are. And business owners, um, depending on what type of business you have, you might not always be there. Uh, you might be, you know, out doing some prospecting calls and visiting with clients and you've got, you know, your team of people answering the phone, or if it's a brick and mortar business, or if it's a service business, you have them out in the field. So how can we be prepared and ready as a company, as a business? And I started thinking back to some of my employers, some of them were national and some of them were, were local employers that, you know, businesses that I worked with. And I started to really think about the businesses that stood out and how they were successful. One thing that I can tell you that some most successful businesses do is prepare their teams ahead of time. How? By having weekly meetings. I can tell you two businesses that I can think of, small businesses that I worked for, 
that had weekly meetings with their team. And they were normally on Friday. Sometimes they were on Mondays if we couldn't get that Friday in. But those were times where we shared the wins and the successes, but then we also shared the uncomfortable, right? And it's hard to share the uncomfortable, but it's important for the owners and everybody within the organization to know. So just being prepared and ready. And when we developed this uh, communicating with difficult customers, we use the act, we use learn as our acronym to practice active listening. So we're really going to deep, deep, you know, deep, um, dig deep. Hello, <laughs> dig deep into these, which is listen, empathize, act, respond, and notify. So, and do you realize that 58% of Americans of Americans will switch companies because of poor customer service? That's a huge, that is huge. So how can we turn that around? How can we have this percentage go down to where there's not that many unhappy customers? Um, when, we, when we think of listening, what are some things that we think about? How can we listen? What are some examples of good listening? Um, I recently actually uh, had a situation with Verbo, the vacation rental um, company. And um, it was very, very complex, extremely complex what had happened. So I actually, I actually had to like write down exactly what I was going to say when I got on the call to Verbo. But what was really interesting about this, and this is one, one way, and I gave this example I know in the Make It a Great Day class, is when, you, when you're on the phone with a customer, say you're a customer service expert and you're on the phone, you're on the phone all day, what are some things that you can do to let your customer know that you're really actively listening? Let them know you're taking notes or ask permission. Mrs. Smith, is it okay if I take some notes down? And that's exactly what this Verbo customer service expert was doing. Um, when I was talking to him um, about my situation, because it was very complex, I was making sure that he understood the steps and what had happened. He said, Mrs. Hay, he said, I want you to know that I'm taking down some notes. And I thought, was he in my, was he in my training class last week? But honestly, taking, and what's another reason that we might want to take down notes? I don't know about y'all, but I am extremely forgetful at times. If I have a lot going on, which is normally I've got a lot going on, I have to take notes when I'm visiting with a client or when I'm in a situation or I have to take notes because number one, it's great to reference back to um, and have even if you need to file it in, some, in your documents. But not only that, by taking notes, you can go back and look at the trends. Maybe there's something that we're seeing that management needs to be addressed about. So letting your customer know that you're taking notes, but how about if you're in, you know, you're face to face with the customer. Um, you're not in a customer service role where you're on the phone. What, what's another active, what's another way to let them know that you're listening? Stop your multitasking. Um, you know, maybe you were in the middle of something and, uh, you know, it was really, it was a project that you need to get done by today. For us to really be listening, just to have that face-to-face -face conversation and dialogue is so important. Uh, but more than anything now through this pandemic, people want to be heard. They want to make sure that you're understanding and that you're hearing their situation. And, and this is, I think, just human nature sometimes. You know, when somebody's discussing a problem with us and we already know, like, they're, they're into, like, the, the first minute of, like, explaining the situation, we already kind of know and have figured out, oh, well, I know what happened. So we just want to interrupt, right? And we want to just let them talk. Let your customer express what's going on. Let them give them your feedback and just let them talk. And make sure that you um, are not making them feel like their their problem or their situation isn't important. Don't be dismissive. If you know they they ordered something and it was really important that they that it got there on time and it didn't, um, then you know let them know that it's you know uh, uh, 
you know, if it's important to them, then it should be important to us to be able to listen, right? Um, let's say you're in a situation where you are face to face with a customer. Um, I know uh, just I when I was out yesterday running some errands and doing some business calls, um, I, you know, I was really noticing, you know, especially when I went into this one office building um, and I was interacting and uh, talking with, with uh, the management team there, um, just the body language. You know, um, I thought it was going to like be a brief, a brief visit. And I could tell by the time that I got there that um, they wanted some more, you know, that we were going to visit a little bit longer. They had some questions and things that they wanted to talk about and address. And I could tell that just by the body language and by, you know, just our interaction there. So, again, um, just paying attention to these little things that might seem like. You know, and again, these are things we've heard before, right? I'm not going to tell you things today that we haven't heard before because it's very universal training, but it's these little things that really do make a difference. You know, letting Mrs. Smith know I'm make, God, I am taking notes right now. I told you when that Verbo customer service expert told me he was taking notes, I was glad he was taking notes because it was a very complex situation. And if he wasn't taking notes, I sure didn't know how he was going to resolve this. Okay. So I know we spent a lot of time here, but um, it's just, you know, if we can't practice listening, then we can't solve the problems. Right. So really empathizing with our customers too. And what do we mean by empathizing? If we can really tap into the emotion that they're having when they're not happy. Um, that is going to be key, you know, whatever that emotion might be, maybe they're frustrated. Maybe they're disappointed. Maybe they're angry. We're going to talk about the difference of unhappy customers and angry customers too. Um, but again, you know, really tapping in to what is their emotion behind why they are calling in. And um, if you're anybody like me, who's really, I mean, I talk loud. I've always been told, Ana, you talk really loud. So when I've caught myself in situations, either over the phone or in person, I kind of have to change my tone. I kind of have to tone it down because my voice just projects loud, right? So that's something too, that you really want to pay attention to is your tone of voice um, because people can read us. You know, um, you, you can tell when somebody's happy to help you on a call. You can tell, you know, if they're really listening again and just keeping that calmness and putting yourself really in the other person's shoes too. You know, um, gosh, I can understand how, you, how you're really frustrated about this, Mr. Gonzalez. Gosh, I mean, yeah, I would be frustrated too. I understand, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then they'll know that, wow, she's, she really understands what, what I'm feeling here, you know, and, uh, letting them know that you're going to make it right. And, um, but just really, if you can tap into that emotion that that other person is feeling at the time, whether it's on the phone or in person, it's really going to make a huge difference. Um, and the actions that, that we're going to take when there is a problem, um, you know, I, I go back to this and we talk so much about this in the, in the, um, make it a great day. Um, uh, customer train is customer service and excellence in customer service. But, you know, if we can keep that Texas motto of who we are as Texans and in the great state of Texas, always in front of us. When we're having those times where, you know, a customer calls in and or comes in the door and we're just having a great day, you know, and we're like, you know, how are we going to, what are the actions that we're going to take? You know, we're going to want to make sure that we're going to communicate immediately and let them know this, the steps that we're going to take. And we're going to want to make sure to follow up in a, in the time frame of what's going to be acceptable to our client, right? Um, and making it a top priority. And what are some, some action steps that we can do? I'm going to give you another um, example that just, I, I don't know why I've had so many examples lately, you know, of different, uh, maybe I just, I pay attention to everything. I'm just very, very, um, I don't know. I'm just, I just am. I'm, I pay attention to everything all the time. 
But um, recently, I'm going to give you this example because it's a great example of the action steps that this company took on um, on this situation. But I had ordered some slippers from Lands In. I think Lands In does an excellent job of customer service. Their customer service action actually is just legendary. I mean, it's just exceptional. But I had ordered some slippers for my husband's birthday, and his birthday was a couple of weeks ago. Well, when I got the box, I it said Lands In, and I thought, oh, it it look it doesn't look like slippers are in there, but. Hmm, I don't know, maybe they sent me something special. And so I open it up and it's actually a tie. And I'm like, that's weird. And when I'm looking at it, it said slippers, like the little packing slip. So I get on the line, I call Lands in customer service. And as always, they're just on top of it. And uh, she was, you know, asking me like, what's 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 on the top of what what's the label that's on the top of the box, and what's on the label that's on the in, inside of where the tie was, and what she was doing was she was actually taking action on she was she was trying to figure out how this actually happened, and I thought, wow. I mean, she was getting so detailed with the stickers because she was trying to understand how it how it all happened. And I thought, you know what? She was communicating. She was talking to me. She was asking me, like, you know, uh, when I placed the order, she was, you know, finding out, you know, exactly what was what was in the box. And then she acted and said, and I said, you know, it's 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 not a big deal. Just, you know, I said, you know, just. Uh, how soon do you think I'll be able to get the slippers? And she said, oh, she said, she said, well, she said, I might take it, you know, we'll, 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 we'll act on this right away was what she said. I said, thank you so much. I said, it was a birthday gift, but it's not a big deal. It's slippers, you know? And, but the fact of how quick she acted on it and the steps told me she was really listening. She empathized with me and she acted right away. So, and she gave me a time frame. She said, you know, you should have these, I would think just in a few days. And I did, I had, I think we had, it was a Friday I called in. I think that we had the slippers on Monday. Okay. And she thanked me again. She thanked me for understanding. I said, it was okay, not a problem. But, you know, just letting our customers know when, you know, the problem can be solved or what we're gonna do in order to, to move forward. Um, respond and this, this connects a lot to the actions, but, you know, making it right and even, even gathering information. Maybe sometimes we need to gather more information. And once we've gathered that information, I'm, I know I've looked at situations before. And gone human error. Human error. Oh my gosh. It was my fault. I didn't get it to them. I didn't. Send it or I didn't mail it and I got the date wrong on the order or whatever the situation is, is just to be honest, you know, to really be honest when we're solving these uh, difficult customer situations. Um, you know, if we've made an error, just to own up to it and say, you know, I apologize. But, you know, we, we brought it to management and uh, we looked at the situation and did some research and you know what? We, we, you know, forgot this step in the process or something. So, you know, and, and we're going to get through, we're going to go and we're going to talk about, you know, some solutions to, to some of these to situations, but, you know, responding sometimes without even people, without even them expecting us to respond. Right. Uh, this recently happened to our daughter was coming to visit us and flew Southwest and, you know, I talk a lot, I talked about Southwest and our customer service training, but, you know, they stand behind their value proposition because she had some, some problems with her flights coming here delays and then getting on the plane and then being delayed because of maintenance. And she didn't complain to them. But what did they do? They responded with a Southwest love voucher of $100. Okay. Now, as business owners, what can we do? What can we do? How can we respond as small business owners when there is when there is an unhappy customer or um, uh, an unhappy customer with 
without them even asking for anything, right? Um, some things that we can do, and we can think through that as small business owners on situations and things that we want, that we might like to do for our customers when they are unhappy and dissatisfied. And also it's important to notify, notify our management team of um, situations that do come up. I don't know why it's doing that, but <laughs> anyway, um, and this is important also as, as business owners. Uh, I know we're a small business. It's only me and my son, okay? But we, you know, have meetings and we talk about things and, and address things. But if you're a small business owner, and let's say you have a team of 10 people, you know, um, and your manager is there, you trust, you got a great management team and you've got a great customer service team and associates within your organization. So if a, if a situation arises, managers, it's real important to address it to your management team. Um, because how, how, how awesome would it be if the customer that was unhappy or dissatisfied got a call from the owner? you know, um, offering them a special discount or refund for something. So notifying your, your um, management team, no matter what size of company you are or the owner about situations is really gonna be impactful. You're gonna notice and you'll, you'll see how impactful this is. And now you're asking me, Anna, let's get real, okay? You talked about these, this all sounds calm. We're gonna listen, you know, we're gonna empathize with the customer. We're going to create some action and we're going to respond to times, you know, with with uh, out the customer asking and we're going to notify our management team. But let's get real. How many times have we felt like her? Right. <laughs> I mean, somebody is unhappy. You know, it's caught us off guard. Right. How many times have we had situations? I'm just thinking back. Oh, my goodness. Of situations that were hard. Um, I remember one time a customer was so unhappy. It was with, um, I worked as a fundraising consultant for, um, for a number of years. And I'm sure you all have bought like your grandkids or your kids, like things from magazines, right? Well, our product did not get, or no, it wasn't the product. It was the, I think incentives did not get to the school on time. And these kids were excited about getting their incentives you know, that they had worked hard for. And I remember having to drive from Corpus Christi, Texas down to the Valley on a Sunday to get it to the school principal because it was not gonna get there on time. So, you know, let's get real. There's gonna be times when we are gonna feel so overwhelmed with a situation um, that we're gonna need to step away we're going to need, if you're brick, you're going to need to maybe, if you're able to take a walk outside, go to the break room, um, you know, get your manager or another colleague to, to, you know, go, you know, I, I'm this, this did not, this did not go well, or this call didn't happen the way that I thought it was going to happen. How did I do? Did I handle this right? Uh, so really getting that feedback from, from somebody else within your organization. And, you know, just taking time to whatever that time, what breathe means to you, you know, I mean, no, that, I mean, actually, that breathing really does help. They, they say that the anxiety and when we're real frustrated, that tension that we have, it's because we haven't taken a breath. So um, this is, this is like get real here because we all are going to have situations and, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that you all have decided to really offer this class um, or this webinar communicating with difficult customers because we are human and we are going to make mistakes and there are going to be things that are going to be uncomfortable but by us being ready that's the important thing so um, I really did want to want to have share about that because I think it's important that we all know that that you know we are real and we do have real emotions with this the reason I wanted to cover the, the difference between the unhappy customer and the angry customer is because how that unhappy customer, what to expect from an unhappy customer and how we can turn that around in the solutions, which we're gonna get to in just the next one or two slides. But the unhappy customer, a lot of times you won't even know that they're unhappy. 
like they'll either purchase from you, come by and visit your restaurant, come by your, your boutique, use your service, but then never call back because there was something that they didn't meet their expectation or they were, you know, they didn't share their unhappiness. So you, you lose a customer and you're not really sure why. Um, and then um, they, they're not ones to really kind of share that they were unhappy. They're not going to voice it. They're just like going to, it's just like they were unhappy, not a big deal, moving on to the next, right? And then there's the angry customer. <laughs> the angry customer can almost make us feel uncomfortable, which happened a few weeks ago. We were at a restaurant and there were some, un, there were some angry customers that were sitting at the table right behind my husband. I was right here and you can only imagine how hard it was for me to stay in my seat. But they were unhappy. They made it public. They were rude to the server. Um, they were just very disrespectful. And um, so, and they're the type of customer that is going to make it heard. They're the type of customer that's going to share it with their neighbor, that's going to share it over dinner with another couple, that's possibly going to put it on social media. And so as business owners, how do we handle situations like that? Um, I know that the manager came over to, to, the, to, the, to, the, uh, to, the, to the table that uh, was unhappy. I, when they checked out, I don't know if she took care of their, their situation. But um, it's important to know this, especially on your social media platforms, which I'm sure you either are managing yourself or have somebody that's managing that so that you can see if anything's been shared on your social media. Uh, but, um, you know, there are solutions to these and it's unfortunate that uh, people will act out um, in public. And um, I wanted to give you an example of an unhappy situation because um, we aren't the type of people that act out, but an unhappy situation happened a number of years ago where we, my husband wanted, we were buying some boots for his birthday. And so we went to this one retailer and we were there for about an hour because he was trying on all these boots. Well, when we got home and he tried them on and walked around, they were kind of, you know, they were stretching out. And then he's like, hmm, and he, he was like, you know, I need to go check the mail. And he went to check the mail, came back, and I'm like, I don't know if that was a really good idea for you to do that because now we can't return him because I haven't even scuffed them up. I mean, they're just, I mean, now they're even looser. I was like, okay, so let's go back. Let's go back to the retailer and share with them, you know, just get you a different pair. We will, they, they never apologize. I mean, they, they, and we, I mean, it was, it was such an uncomfortable situation. And I know that they knew that we weren't happy, but we didn't like make a fuss. We just wanted the smaller, the smaller size. And the way that they treated us, number one, they, they, they never like expressed concern that uh, like, oh, well, gosh, you know, sometimes they do st or stretch out. It was almost like they were, um, they were just offended or something. And my husband was just really caught off guard. So that's a, an example, like we just told ourselves we would never go back there again. Um, never go back there again and um, never have, um, never really have, have, have shared like, you know, really a lot, just, I mean, we just never go back there. So as business owners, how can we, how can we be proactive about situations like this? And this is where I want to talk about solutions. So, um, and I really want us to even give some examples at the end, because the reason I share these, these personal examples is because um, they're real. And um, it helps me think as a business owner, and hopefully I help, it helps other business owners think about how we would handle situations. But what are some solutions to these? Customer service, Customer feedback surveys are so important. Um, I know that I see this quite a bit, and I'm sure y'all do too. Um, at whether I've gone, I just whether I've gone to a coffee shop, or uh, just recently uh, changed um, changed doctors, got a, got a customer service feedback from the clinic, um, ordered something online. Customer feedback surveys are so important because they tell us so much. 
So small business owners, or if you are not using surveys right now, I highly encourage you to use surveys. Um, I know that when we do our on some customer service training classes, we get surveys. So as I get surveys, so I want to hear the feedback that others are saying about the webinars and the training. So um, I highly encourage you to use those customer service uh, feedback surveys under promise and over deliver. Um, just that example that I gave you of Southwest Airlines, you know, under promise, I mean, yeah, under promise over deliver, you know, she got a hundred dollar voucher because they could track how she, how, you know, they delayed her flight so many times, you know, and that, that just happens in Houston though. It just happens in Houston, right? It just always does. But, um, you know, when you just, if you say that you're going to get something to somebody at a certain period of time, maybe get it to them early earlier you know but this this is this has been like something that has been said for years and it's just doing that little extra and a lot of times it doesn't even mean doing like very costly um it's just doing that little extra um communication preference ask your customers you know especially if you're a service business you know where how do you want them to communicate? You know, do you expect a call when you're going to have service done in your home or when you're going to have an appointment? Do you, um, would you prefer to have an email or would you prefer to um, have a phone call reminder? So again, these are solutions and things that you can be thinking of that can really help those solve those problems. Understanding the problem, you know, so many times we might listen to a situation, we're taking notes, but do we really understand the problem? And going back to my Verbo experience, I wanted to make sure that that customer service expert understood the problem because I had a hard time understanding the situation. So just really understanding, you know, what the situation is and knowing what you're, what, and making sure that you have a customer service guarantee and that you stand by that and making sure to business owners that your associates understand that, understand, understand the return policy. And, you know, I know that there's always exceptions to every rule. You know, there's always exceptions. Maybe you have a guarantee of your product or service for 30 days and then it's 31 days or 32 days. Do you honor that? Do you, can you still honor that? So, um, and making sure that your team understands um, what that is and um, customizing maybe, you know, even an approval process. This question actually came up in the last communicating with customers training uh somebody had an sd business an etsy business and i guess they do customized tumblers well the i guess yeah the the customer that that ordered the the tumbler that was customized had changed their design so the business owner wanted to know well that really if she changed her design that really isn't you know, do I refund it? I mean, that was her, you know, every situation is going to be real individual. But I know just when, when I've ordered things online, especially if they're customized, I actually have to check a box, a box that, that says that, yes, I agree that. So maybe um, business owners having those things in place and making sure that you have those things in place. And also, you know, say what you're going to do, follow up. You know, if you say that you're going to honor a return and then that return should, you know, arrive in such and such time, make sure if you say that you're going to do something just to follow up. And, you know, the quality control process, that's what I was talking to before about really having those things in place to make sure that your customer understands that, you know, this is a customized order and you've proofread it. Therefore, you know, we're going to follow through on the order and um, apologizing, you know, you can, you can't over apologize. You can't. And you know what I've also noticed sometimes and is sometimes the companies forget to apologize. You know, I mean, they're so busy, like taking care of the situation. They didn't mean to. 
But if you can just have something that just reminds you to always remember to apologize. Um, you know, 90% of customer Americans use customer service as a factor in, deci in deciding whether or not to do business with the company. That's huge. They use customer service as a factor. So again, we're not always gonna do everything right, but the customer service that we provide to our customers and that customer service mission that we stand by, that we talked about in the Make It A Great Day training and that mantra that we stand by, that's what's gonna keep our customers coming back. So we covered a lot there, right? <laughs> <laughs> we covered a whole lot there. Um, and so now we're moving on to what to do when customers want to chat. Do we need to, to do we have any questions here? I, I feel like there was a lot of meat there, lots that we covered, or do we just want to wait till, till the end, which we still have quite a bit to go through um, and um, hold off until then? Well, I would hold off right now because I don't see any in the chat, but I would like to prompt everybody at this moment to go ahead and put some things in the chat so that we can be going ahead and, and remembering what we said as we're going. And if you have any questions, we'll take them at the end with Anna. Okay, great, great. This part is really going to apply probably more to customer service experts and businesses that are online or that if they're not online, the majority of their business is uh, on the phone, okay? Um, though we can relate it to in-person, but this is gonna apply more to that. And, you know, we all have customers, whether we have external customers or internal customers, you know? Some of us have brick and mortar businesses. Some of us have online shops. Some of us uh, have service business. So you've got maybe service teams going out and you've got your, your team inside that's taking those calls for those service appointments, okay? So I created this so that, it's especially during the time of the pandemic, what companies were seeing, and I did some research on this, companies were seeing especially much more, people were wanting, because we were so isolated for so long, people wanted longer conversations on the phone. And I had actually, I, th this is actually true. What is the name of the company? Oh gosh, why can't I think of them? Um, they're the shoe company and uh, they're the company you can call into. Oh my goodness. And I didn't have it right here, but uh, it'll come to me, okay? Because they're really big, but you can actually call into this one company and Zappos, there you go, Zappos. They started off as a shoe company, but they do more than shoes. They actually have a customer service department that you can call and ask any questions. And they really promoted this during the pandemic because people were so isolated. And so what companies, especially online companies were finding was that their customers were wanting to stay on the phone longer. Um, but once you got through with their problems, they just wanted to chat. And so um, Zappos actually created this line and I called in to ask if it was true because I seen it and it was true. Um, I need to find out if they're still doing that, but uh, they, were, they were doing it and have been known for doing this. But what are some ways that we can keep our conversation short and simple when our customers do want to stay on the phone and chat, when we can see that we've helped them through the, the situation and their unhappiness? Um, I have here, don't ask questions. And that almost sounds contradictory to listening, right? But I guess what I mean more about that is don't ask questions. Let's say you've got Mrs. Smith on the line and she's so excited about her little Susie's dance recital that's coming up. I mean, she's told you the design of her dress and, you know, what, you know, what, what dance she's going to do, you know. And you've noticed that you've helped her with her problem and the call, you're looking at the clock and you're like, okay, we have been on this call for like, you know, 10 to 15 minutes now. I want to hear about Mrs. Smith's little Susie, but I can't, I can, don't ask any questions. If she continued, don't just, because if you ask, well, what's her, what's her, what's her outfit look like? You're just continuing that. So that's what I mean by don't ask any questions. Stay focused on the call and what you're calling about. 
um, and your time. Anybody that's in a customer service expert position, customer service ambassador role, they're on the phone. They, they, they have been trained for how long their call should take. Okay. Um, so be, be mindful of your time, um, but stay focused on the call and, um, Here's some, we're going to get in to, to some actual dialogues that, um, and some, some statements that I actually created um, that talks about this. And we're just going to go through just, just real quickly on some of these. But, you know, Mrs. Smith, I'd love to hear more about Susie, her situation, whatever. But our call volume has really increased lately. Isn't that polite? I mean, instead of saying, I've got to get this next call, you know, but our call volume has really increased and companies saw an increase. Online companies saw a huge increase. People were shopping online. Uh, people were calling in with, with more issues and, you know, the delivery and everything, right? Because, yeah, I mean, FedEx, the post office, everybody was getting hit hard, right? Um, Mr. Mr. Gonzalez, it's so kind of you to share your insights and opinions about However, I need to make sure I get to this concern of yours right away. You know, you're letting the customer know that you're, you want to get to their problem as soon as possible, right? Um, Mrs. Adams, you know, let me make sure that I've taken down accurate notes about your concern so I can move forward on making sure I get this taken care of as soon as possible. You know, again, you're letting Mrs. Adams know you took down the note and now you really want to get this solved for her. Great way to try and not, you know, have that conversation go longer than really needed. Oh, that's so kind of you to share with me the details of Susie's dance recital. However, the quicker I can get some answers for you, the sooner we can get this resolved. Wow, she really wants to get my problem resolved. Okay, you know. Um, here's some more. I can really understand how you feel about this important issue on, but I'm not at liberty to discuss this election. That's where this came from, because during the pandemic, the election was happening and people wanted to voice their opinion, you know, and, um, you know, and stay on the phone and, and talk about things that we really don't need to share our opinions on. Right. Um, can I make sure that we don't forget the issue of. You know why your order was late that we are calling that you're calling in about i may have gotten off track because your conversation was so intriguing you know um and then that gives them lets them know gosh she really she was really listening to me and she was really intrigued but now she's kind of off track because she forgot about what what the problem was right i appreciate you sharing this exciting news about uh, you know, your, your son's graduation, but I can see, I have several other lines holding. Very respectful. How, how Texas friendly is that? Right? Okay. And this, this is, this is, I'm sure we all have used this one in all certain situations is, you know, Mr. Adams, I hate to interrupt you, but I have a pressing issue that I need to address in the next 30 minutes. So, um, again, you'll be able to see these on YouTube. I know it's hard to kind of know exactly, you know, remember all of them, but uh, there's just some really good things to really think about. Um, yes, we want to, yes, we want to build relationships with our customers. Yes, we want to let them know that we're listening, but sometimes things really do get a little you know, do linger as we're as we're on the phone with the customers or even in person when you see, because um, I tell you, because of my retail background, I mean, you've got, you know, some ladies and even gentlemen that want to, you know, really chat, you know, and you've got that tall, long line of people, you know, so just some things that you want to think about. And I hope that these were helpful for you. Um, here are some excellent freight customer service phrases. I know we discussed a number of these, but I, I want to close things uh, positively and some things that we can be thinking of too, um, as we learned about communicating with difficult customers and then also closing with some excellent customer service phrases. I would be happy to help. That's always a great one. Uh, saying your name um, and using your name throughout throughout your customer service visits and calls 
how important that is. I know when somebody's addressing me and I've called in for a situation, how I like for them to use my name throughout the call. You know, thank you for calling. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, I completely understand your frustration. Again, when we're empathizing, if we can tap into the emotion that they're feeling, we're gonna connect with them better. They're frustrated, they're angry, they're disappointed, you know, whatever emotion that they're feeling. Um, let me make sure I have all the information. How many times have we gone to try and solve a problem? We've taken the notes, we've written it down, and we're like, I forgot to ask about that. I don't have that information. You know, I don't, how did I forget that? So, you know, and, um, you know, don't always, you know, if we don't have the answer, somebody has the answer, right? Somebody always has the answer. And it's okay to let our customers know that we don't always have the answer, you know? Mrs. Smith, um, I've not had this situation occur or I'm new here and um, I'm still learning and, but I know that I'm gonna be able to have the answer from my manager. Um, your time is valuable. So let me make sure that I get to this promptly. People, I, th there's one thing I value is people's time. I really do. I value people's time. So I want to get to this promptly so that we can move forward and uh, let me make sure that we're going to make this right. If you're able to offer a discount uh, or a refund without having to go to management, um, I'm sure that that as, as a company, as, as business owners, you know, we've given our managers and our associates, you know, some authority on what, what we can do. But if you're able to offer a discount or a refund, um, offer that. And if you're not, maybe, you know, go to your manager and ask. I know that this is, you know, this is an unfortunate situation that happened. Um, I know this, you know, there's, this is the guarantee, but you know, can we make an exception here? You know, we appreciate you using our company. We appreciate you doing business with us, you know, and I look forward to talking with you again, you know, um, especially if it's, you know, a difficult situation. We look forward to seeing you again. Uh, we look forward to helping you again. And if a customer calls in, and great question. You never had that situation ever occur. Um, these are just, I wanted to finish just a little, I know we've got till 1230, but um, just some customer service etiquette. And I know we've talked about several of these, um, but again, focusing on the customer and not multitasking and using their names throughout the conversation as you're as you're um as you're dialoguing and, and having that conversation with the customer and i know i gave you the example in the make it a great day training about my phone carrier and about mike who's gonna make it right you know um i know that they're especially a customer service um Customer service experts, especially with, with big corporations or even small co companies, you want to have something scripted, right? But, you know, if we can have more of a conversation with our customers and uh, having that kind of natural dialogue with them, it's really going to make a difference. So, and use humor. I mean, isn't it great when you've had a customer that has called in, you know, or come into your business? Uh, maybe they weren't happy with the service that you provided, you know, you have service that was out there and now the customers called in to talk with the owner because they weren't happy with the service that they provided. You know, if we can leave and make it a goal to when we hang up that phone or when that customer walks out that door, that they we've we've got some humor in there, you know, maybe we've, you know, uh, laughed a little bit about, you know, how we're going to solve the problem or how the situation was, but just to be genuine and to be authentic. Um, and you know me, I'm, I always want to close with uh, writing that handwritten note. How can we, you know, if, if we've got an unhappy customer, and this is another example too, I don't know if y'all are familiar with lamb, lambs, lambs candies out of Austin, but if you have never had their candies or their chocolates, they're just amazing. And um, I had actually ordered, this was actually in 2019. I've kept their little thank you note because it's so sweet. But I had actually placed an order and it didn't get to where it was supposed to get. And I really wanted it to get there on time because somebody had done something just over the top for me on a project and it didn't get there, but they 
you know what? They sent another package to them and then they sent me some candy with a note thanking me. I, I have that on another desk in, in one of my other offices in the house because it just, and you know what? I, I used, I still order from them, but it's those little things that make a huge difference as, as we're growing our small businesses. What are we going to do that's going to stand out? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And how much we appreciate you. So. We covered a lot here. Uh, we went through a lot of those statements and we can go back. I can go back in the screen, uh, but we talked about how we're going to learn to listen. We, we, we have the acronym of learn as listen. We're going to empathize. We're going to act. We're going to respond. We're going to notify our management teams. You know, how are we going to uh, look at problems as opportunities to build loyal customers, you know, just like Bill Gates says, you know, our most unhappy customers are our greatest source of learning. Um, and how are we going to solve, solve these problems and, you know, um, keep it brief with our customers, um, especially for those customers that, that want to keep us on the line longer. And we'd love to listen, but we've, we've got work to do, right? We've got a business to run. And uh, what are some solutions that we can, what are some things we can have in place, you know, as business owners um, and do so that we can prevent some things from happening or be ready by having those, those weekly meetings, whether they're on a Monday or a Friday. And uh, going back to some of those great customer service phrases and etiquette and keeping that Texas friendly motto and our, our meaning of great in the forefront of our, our daily activity in, in our business. So we covered a lot here. Um, if if y'all want me to maybe cover, go back and, and cover any of those er other areas, or maybe we can even open up for some, we can learn from each other through some examples of an unhappy customer situation or something that, you know, there's situations, right, that kind of stick with us. They're, you know, uh, how we solved the problem before. Um, so I'd like to kind of open it up and share some takeaways and ideas from here. Great, thank you uh, very much, Anna, for all of the great information. Uh, as she just requested, if you want, please just Unmic yourself and say, I have something I'd like to add, sharing a takeaway or some of your ideas or perhaps a story, as she said, I'd be happy to take it at this time. Is there anybody who'd like to share? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. And here, I'll go back here so that they can see if there's any of the categories or anything maybe that they would like me to, to go over again or give some examples or anything. Um, Well, to open up the floor a little bit, I guess I will start uh, just to give everybody a little more comfortability to try to try to jump in. But uh, I was in uh, customer service for many years uh, and in the tourism business. And so it's in Cancun, Mexico, to be exact. So oh. one of the one of the oh, it sounds great, right? You see my golden brown tan. Yeah, I never got one because we were always working, but inside a ballroom usually. But the quest, the the. The question came to play uh, when people are going to a one week only stay, for example, at an all inclusive hotel, for example, but they're having a conference, perhaps, which is the thing that we did the most conferences. And um, whenever something's not going well, it, you, you try to figure out how you can make it better, knowing that you only have a limited amount of time to make it better because they're going to go away at the end of the week. So I've learned from some of the very best, in my opinion, general managers of hotels and how they were able to uh, amend things while they were there, such as a comping a dinner at their finest restaurant, if they could, if it was something really intense uh, that didn't happen well, perhaps their room, for example, in this case, there was under construction, one of the towers of the hotel, but yet they had to overflow into that because they just didn't have enough rooms. So they made them as good as they could, but there was construction going on. And so everybody in that tower, he basically gave them uh, a free dinner 
uh, and made made free breakfast actually is what it ended up being for anybody in that tower the entire stay for the week over in the other tower that was fully functional without that and he just double staffed the hotel on that side so that he could handle their free breakfast i thought that was a really great way to do it but he was proactive and said we know there's construction going on uh and we know that this is you know not comfortable for you but we want your stay to be uh great just the same so please let us know at breakfast which we're inviting you to and i thought that was really proactively great on the general manager's part so i want to share that with you as far as using some of the skill sets you were talking about here he was he knew it was going to be an issue so he already had a plan in place as to how to resolve it and he had staff ready to deal with that including answering their questions so that's that's wow. one of the that's a great example, you know, and just being proactive and knowing that ahead of time, because I mean, you know, you're going to have some unhappy people. So why, why not just, you know, and they went over and above. Mm -hmm. they went well, yeah. over I, I know he lost a little revenue on his food and beverage, but at the same time, he didn't lose a lot of clients. In fact, they very much appreciated it and probably spent their money on other things that they would have spent it on anyway. Right. So. Right, right. That's a great example. That's a great example. And, you know, the hospitality industry um, or, you know, tourism, uh, I know, uh, just really, really took a hit, too, during the pandemic time. Absolutely. You know, um, I remember my first experience, um, and I was actually in the Dallas area uh, when I, my first experience during COVID of uh, going into the hospitality industry and booking my first room. I, I just remember even how how proactive they were with everything, you know, and um, they had to be during that time. But no, that's a great example. Thank you for sharing that, Brett. Appreciate You're welcome. that. Um, and we do have a quick question about the content. First of all, they say great content. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, the recording of this will be available on the YouTube channel. If you look at the top of our chat, you can click right there and give us a couple of days. And this one also will be included there. Uh, so you can go there to our YouTube channel for the SBDC in North Central Texas. I hope that answers your question there. Yeah. Awesome. Anybody else have any co comments or anything they would like to add for today's session or any questions they have for Anna? I'm seeing that you covered a lot of information and I see that you, you covered a lot of things. So for me, one of my big takeaways is the customer service feedback in, in the form of surveys, for example, which, by the way, I'm going to remind everybody right now, there will be a survey after this because we at the SBDC understand this and have already implemented this as part of our procedure because it's important to know, is this information helping you? And how can we give you better information in the future? We use those surveys to find out. So when you get that survey, take 1.5 minutes to get you just go down and fill it out. And at the bottom, tell us what more we can do to make it better. Or if there's a subject matter that you want to address, yeah. we'll be able and those, to try to and those sur Right. And those surveys, I know that as, as, uh, as a client, I remember writing down uh, some areas too uh, for some training, you know, that, that we needed at our SBDC, you mm -hmm. know? So also by those surveys, I'm sure, sure you even ask them that, like what what are some other topics that you'd like to see us discuss, right? Exactly. You know? exactly yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And, you know, sometimes I, you know, really, I mean, almost every time I'll go to this, I'm always getting surveys on my phone, right? And I make an appoint to answer those surveys because I think it's really important for for businesses to know. Um, and uh, so I hope that, that those ideas for the solutions um, were were helpful because I think sometimes as small business owners, um, there's just a lot. I, I don't know why. I, I guess going into 2021 with some new things that we're looking at as, as a small business and some changes that we're making, I, I'll look at my list and go, oh my gosh, you know, it can be overwhelming. So um, I encourage you, and I've done this too, where I go back and I review a webinar that I've heard before. Um, I know that, uh, I think it was 
I don't, I, y'all partner with SCORE too, I think sometimes, right? Do you all partner with the SBD? They're, on, they're for nonprofits and we're for profits, but we're oh, all, okay. we're all okay, that's, through the SBA. That's, that's what, okay, okay. Then it's the S, SBDC, I know, um, has, has done too a lot of um, social media boot camps and things. And I know that there was one topic that I was really interested in that I just listened to like three times before I got it right, before I could really understand it. So, um, uh, yes, I, I encourage you to, to do that. But um, uh, I know we, like I said, we, we covered a lot, of, especially with the problem, problems are opportunities for customer loyalty. Anybody have any feedback on there or, or maybe a situation to where they weren't happy and then they became like the most loyal customer? There was the situation that wasn't right, but they made it right. And now like they, they don't think about going anywhere else, but that one business. Anybody? I don't know that anybody maybe has that same experience yet in the past, perhaps. But I, I, I totally get what you're saying. I've seen it happen before where people are, uh, you know, that it, it didn't, they came in with a problem and they left one of your best clients ever simply because you took care of it in a good way. Um, you know, a lot of times it's simply asking for the opportunity to make it better. You know, and, and if you start with that attitude and at the end, double check and say, hey, did we did we do this right? Did we make it, did we make it better, Anna? And if Anna's happy, it's like, great. And then, I'll, and then you follow up again, like you said, in some of the things that you were saying to say, hey, Anna, we really appreciate it from the owner of the company, for example, and just say, we really appreciate you giving us the opportunity to fix a problem we were unaware of. But thank you for bringing it to our attention. And if there's anything else in the future we can do to make it, you know, to to for you in the future, please let us know. We value you as a client. So I think that's just really good stuff. You did it really categorized it well so that all of us can figure out how to get to the happy client when they entered as a not so happy client. Right, right. And uh, you know, just you know, it and you know, lots of times we can feel like we are prepared and we are ready, but, um, you know, and, and as, as business owners, we are going to have those situations that do develop that we've never had before, Absolutely. you know, and, um, uh, and actually that's when I go to, uh, my partner or my SBDC advisor and go, I don't know how to handle this, you know, or this is how I think I need to handle this. Uh, what is your advice? You know, uh, going to that mentor, going to that business advisor, um, uh, or your partner within your company to to work through that, because sometimes they might be able to see a situation through their own eyes differently than we see in ours. Absolutely. Um, any other closing takeaways before we go to some of the upcoming things that are coming up soon? Go right ahead. This, uh, this is you smile. You got this. I love that, by the way. Yes, yes. Y'all, we got this. We do. We do. Um, you know, just the fact that we are business owners, that we're entrepreneurs, you know, uh, we, 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 we know how to solve problems. And if we're not sure what the next step is, we know where to go for the next step. Right? So, uh, I thank you all for, um, for being on this uncomfortable kind of topic to talk about communicating with typical customers. Uh, but uh, know that we're all learning the ropes together. We're all learning the ropes together. And uh, so, yeah, thank you all so much for having me. And thank you, Anna. We very much appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Anna Hay. Uh, and we do, we do appreciate it. Biggest takeaway for me today is to just be genuine and try to help them resolve their problems and, and be genuine about that whole moment so that at the end, you, you actually have an opportunity to make something great out of it. With that, I want to share with you some of the other upcoming things uh, that, that all of you should be aware about, including today at two o'clock, Leading a team in a virtual world by Lorna Kibbe. We're all 
having to do it even right now you're part of it so if you have uh an opportunity to step in at two o'clock this afternoon that will be a great one we also uh continuing on the 21st with intro to quickbooks payroll part two if you haven't seen one please go to that youtube channel uh and that's in our chat and it will send you right backwards you can go to that it's with stacy kindall we have tracking finances <clears throat> measuring success with angela randolph and we have how to write a topic uh, top-notch website part one of a two-part series coming up from Ashley Cook and uh, Texas Workforce Commission Decoded by C.J. Petit, Petit, Petit. I will have to check out how to pronounce that, but I believe it is Petit. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any other questions or you'd like to, please go down to the sbdc.nctc.edu website for more information about what we do or to schedule time with an actual advisor to get some one-on-one -on -one confidential uh, counseling for yourself and your company, and we'll be happy to make those arrangements. We This is some of our other upcoming webinars, the QR code in the top. If you wanna go to that, you'll see the things that are also up and coming even further into the future into March, um, and we'll be happy to share any and all information we can. We are funded, and we do wanna thank uh, the Small Business Administration, the State of Texas, North Texas SBDC Regional Office, North Texas Central, uh, North Central Texas College, as well for making all of these webinars and our training for you at no cost to you. We're happy to have all of you joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget, 2 o'clock this afternoon with Ms. Lorna Kibbe as well, leading a team in a virtual world. You guys have an amazing rest of your week. Thank you. Bye, Anna. Bye. Make it a great day. Great.